What's up you guys, Frankie here. This is The Money Resolution, where we talk all things save money, make money, get out of debt. And in this video, we are talking about how to travel Seattle or explore Seattle on the cheap. Actually, not even cheap. We are talking totally free. Traveling in general can definitely be very expensive and the city of Seattle can also be a very expensive place to travel to. As someone who has lived in Seattle for about 15 years now, I felt compelled to put together a quick video to help you out if you're visiting just for a short weekend or honestly there's enough in this list to cover a full week. And I'm not talking kind of free, I am talking free free to the point where with most of these places you won't even be tempted to spend money. First of all, I gotta say there is a big miss conception out there about Seattle. A lot of people think August is the only time to visit Seattle, but in fact, Seattle does have a gorgeous spring. We're actually still in the end of winter here and we have clear skies. That's what sort of inspired me to go ahead and put this video together. This video is also great for any people that actually do live in Seattle and just want to sort of explore Seattle as if they were a tourist. There is so much to do here that even if you have lived here for 15 years like I have, there are lots and lots of things on this list that I bet you probably haven't done, but I don't bet because that might cost money. And be sure to stick around until the very end where I will recap my perfect day by listing my top five from this list of 20 or 21 or so. And if you appreciate all the research and insights that went into putting this video together, I super appreciate a like. Drop a comment down below if you have a favorite from this list or one to add. I am certain I am leaving all kinds of awesome free things out of this list. As always, be sure to do your own research. I will recommend some great resources and websites I found while doing research for this video. And of course, be sure to subscribe to the money resolution, I put out videos roughly once a week on all things personal finance. One quick caveat, of course, before we get started is that transportation from and to and to and from these places is not necessarily going to be free, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna assume you have free transportation. So I do hope you get a ton of value out of this and without further ado, let's jump right into the list. And my first favorite free spot on this list is Gasworks Park. Truth be told, this is one of my favorite places in all of Seattle. They have a very large free parking lot, stunning, stunning views of Lake Washington, downtown Seattle, and a lot more. It's great for individuals, for couples to go have a picnic, or bring your family and let the kids run around. And I gotta say, it's a lot bigger than it probably looks at first glance, so make sure you do some exploring. Apparently, it is an old gasification plant that ran until the mid-1900s. I just found that out. And if you don't take 25 pictures while you're at Gasworks Park, you're doing it wrong. Keep an eye on hours though, the park does close relatively early. Next up is Olympic Sculpture Park. And this is a free outdoor artsy park where they have tons of installations around the park. A lot of them are there year round and some are just seasonal, but no matter what, this is a gorgeous place to see any time of the year. It's on nine acres of land, I believe, and it's got a beautiful water backdrop, so you can really get in a ton of amazing photos here. Sometimes they have live music. I've even seen yoga classes that are going on for free on the lawn in the morning, so be sure to maybe go online and check out the schedule. But either way, the views of the art and the water are stunning. I will say parking might be a little bit challenging, so this is one you might wanna get to via Uber, Lyft, or bus. Next up is to take a hike. And actually just recently, a friend of mine sent me a list of all his favorite hikes. So these are great. He said, even in the winter time, I'll start with easy. Pratt River in North Bend, Ebby's Landing in Whidbey Island, Rattlesnake Ledge in North Bend, Wallace Falls in Sultan, and Little Sai also in North Bend. Medium, if you're looking for something a little more challenging, he recommends Snow Lake at Snoqualmie Pass, Colchuck Lake in Leavenworth, and Longs Pass in Clay Ellum. And if you want something really, really hard, he recommended McClellan Butte in North Bend and Granite Mountain also in North Bend. So a bunch of recommendations there from a local on all his favorite hikes. Speaking of hiking, next up is a another park on the list, and this is Discovery Park. And I mentioned hiking because this park is massive. So you can walk around for miles and miles and miles. Of course, there are once again, sweeping, stunning views. And what I really recommend you do is take the, I think it's roughly three mile round trip hike out to the lighthouse and back. There are coastal views and you will definitely get a workout in. So be sure that you come equipped with some great walking shoes. Next up, we're gonna stay outdoorsy. And this is to go on a bike ride on the Burke Gilman Trail. So this trail runs something like 23 miles and it starts or ends depending on how you look at it 
in Ballard, and it goes through Fremont, Wallingford, the U District, and up north from there. You're gonna wanna pull over and be sure to take a lot of great photos of the view. What I actually recommend you do is to end in Ballard, that's a neighborhood here in Seattle, specifically at Golden Gardens, which is next up on the list. So Golden Gardens is a great little beach area, and actually it's quite large. You'll see lots of families, lots of picnics, lots of barbecues, volleyball on the sand, and even bonfires, but make sure that you do use the designated fire pits if you plan to have one yourself. I think there's pretty steep fines if you don't do it that way. This is gonna offer, I think, some of the most beautiful sunsets in Seattle, so once again, make sure you have that camera ready. So there's already a theme here, which is a lot of outdoor activities that are great for families that offer stunning views. But let's go indoors. So the next tip is to check out one of the many, many amazing museums we have here in Seattle, specifically on the first Thursday of the month, when most of these museums are actually going to offer free admission. So here's a quick rundown of some of those museums. It's the Burke Museum of Natural History and Culture, Living Computers Museum and Labs, never heard of that one, the Museum of Flight, the Museum of History and Industry, that's Mohai, Seattle Art Museum is probably the most popular on this list, the Wing Luke Asian Museum, Northwest African American Museum, and there is a lot, lot more. A great website that I found in doing some research is greaterseattleonthecheap.com. So I'll leave a link in the description below that has a full list of all the free museums. And the same goes with a lot of the museums nearby in Tacoma as well. Next up is to visit a Sunday market. Some of my favorite Sunday markets are the one in Ballard as well as Fremont. The U District near the University of Washington also has a great Sunday market. Now, this is one of those places where you might actually be tempted to spend money, but the reason I decided to include it on this list is because you can actually get a lot of free samples, plus, of course, lots of awesome photos just walking around, and free smells. Those are free too. Be sure that you do check the hours. I think it's something like 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. for most of these, maybe 3.30 or so. These are year-round and most of these are rain or shine. Next up is to take a 30-minute drive actually out of Seattle and go and check out Snoqualmie Falls. It's nearly 300 feet. It is absolutely stunning and there's two ways that you can actually experience the falls. There is a viewing area where you'll see most people go. There is also, it's something like a one-mile round-trip hike down below uh, at the water level where you can get photos looking up at the waterfall. And it is truly, truly, truly a sight to behold. Plus the hotel at the top you can see is the hotel that they used in the TV show Twin Peaks. Next up is to visit Archie McPhee's. This is in the Wallingford neighborhood of Seattle and this is just a super, super quirky, I guess, gift shop, magic shop, I don't know. But you'll have a blast even if you just spend a little bit of time walking around and checking things out. In the very back, I believe, is where they have a rubber chicken museum where there is the largest and smallest rubber chickens in the world, apparently. Very strange, very quirky, but also very fun. It's like you're in a Pee Wee Herman movie or something. Next up is to visit Cary Park. So this is in the Queen Anne neighborhood of Seattle. And once again, this is on the list of one of the most gorgeous places to take photos. So I highly recommend you check out one of the best views in all of the city here at Cary Park. Go early, check out the sunrise because this is also gonna make sure that you get the best parking spot. Okay, truth be told, I used to live a couple of blocks from this next one, which is the Ballard Logs, and I never checked them out until I had moved away from Ballard, and I super regret that decision. The Ballard Locks is a unique, beautiful, awesome experience. It's free every day of the week. I think they're actually open 24 seven as well. They'll have concerts in the summertime. It's another great spot for picnics. The locks actually connect the Puget Sound from the ship canal, and due to the difference in the water height, the ships actually have to pass through the locks to go either higher or lower. It's super interesting to watch. Plus you can actually see the salmon migration, I think from June to September, if you go across the locks and into the little viewing area. Ballard in general is just a lot of fun to roam around, so I highly recommend you check out Market Street, which is right there next to the locks. I actually found this one during research, and this is one I'm really excited to do soon. And this is to check out the Sunday public sale at the Center for Wooden Bones. 
at the Center for Wooden Boats. So it looks like every Sunday they do offer 45 minute to one hour free sailboat rides on Lake Union. Signups are in person only starting at 10 a.m. So I do advise you get there as early as possible. This is one where I bet you actually have to pay for parking if you wanna park in the lot, but I do believe there is a streetcar that runs directly to it. Next is to check out Green Lake. So at Green Lake, there are tons of activities and things to do, including playing basketball or running kayaks. You can of course have a nice picnic there, but the thing I actually recommend you do at Green Lake is to do the walk all the way around, which is something like 2.8 miles. It can get kind of crowded on the trail. There's only one that goes all the way around. So I do recommend you go sort of early or later on in the evening. Next up is to check out a free art walk. So the free art walks in Seattle for the most part are gonna be the third Thursday of the month. So the first Thursday is where you'll have free museum entrance and the third Thursday is where we'll have the free art walks. There are lots of art walks all over Seattle, but the one that I definitely recommend you check out is in Pioneer Square. And something I learned during research is that this is supposedly the spot where they had the first ever art walk in the US. Some of them even have free snacks or wine available. Next up is kind of an odd one, but hear me out. This is to check out the free silent reading party at the Sorrento Hotel. The Sorrento Hotel is in and of itself a beautiful historic landmark. And on the first Wednesday of every month, starting at 6 p.m., they host their famous silent reading party. And it's pretty self-explanatory. This is of course totally free, unless you wanna check out one of their drink specials. Next up is to check out the Downtown Seattle Public Library and not for reasons you might think, but it's actually to check out the architecture here. So this is one of the most stunning buildings in all of Seattle. It is extremely unique in its design. It's eight stories tall. It's got displays in the galleries, colorful halls. It's just lots of interesting viewpoints. It's definitely a spot I recommend you check out just for the photos alone, honestly. And of course, they have free books, but you gotta be a King County resident to check those out. Next up is to explore the University of Washington. This is where I went to school, so I'm a little bit biased, but I think this is one of the most beautiful campuses in the country. And if you happen to be in the area, and I think it's March, that is where you should definitely check out the quad and the cherry blossoms. We have about 10 days, I think it is, each year, sometime usually starting around mid-March, where these are in full bloom, and it is simply stunning. It is going to be very, very crowded with both students and tourists, so be prepared for that but it is something you absolutely have to see. Apparently the quad has 29 large trees that are 86 years old and very, very healthy. This is a no brainer. And then of course I mentioned they do have markets on Sunday, so maybe you can check out campus on Sunday and also check out the nearby market on Sunday in the U District. Next up is the Volunteer Park Conservatory. This is where you're gonna find a really, really awesome indoor conservatory to explore all kinds of plants. And if I remember correctly, parking here is actually pretty easy, especially on Sundays, which is something I should point out that in general on Sundays, parking is free across Seattle. So go check out the indoor plant viewing at the conservatory. And if you do wanna splurge and spend a few bucks, I think it's just five or $10, you can go to the nearby Japanese gardens. I'm gonna pick up the pace here and rattle off a bunch of these. The first is to just explore a neighborhood. I've mentioned a bunch of these already, but some of my favorite neighborhoods are Ballard, Capitol Hill, Fremont, and Queen Anne. Oh, and Georgetown. I like Georgetown too. There are two beaches that I would also recommend, which is Madison Park and Magnuson Beach. So if you are here during a nice day, I would check out one of those. Again, they can get very crowded because we don't have tons of super awesome hot days. So when we do get one of those, a lot of people head to the beach. I'm wearing a shirt I got at the Pike Place Market, which I know is kind of corny, but I definitely recommend you check out Pike Place Market. The reason I'm putting it so late on this list is because I think this is one of those spots where you're definitely going to be tempted to spend money. This is just a really great opportunity to once again explore and take a lot of great photos. Photos you definitely have to get at the market are the gum wall, the golden pig, the fish throwing if they happen to be doing that, as well as the first ever Starbucks. Go see the troll in Fremont, so just search the Fremont troll on Google, I'm sure it'll be easy to find. Once again, parking can be a little bit challenging here and there's not a lot to do here except take a photo of the troll, but it's something that is worth seeing. It was made famous by the movie, 10 Things I Hate About You. The Seattle Center, most things there are quite expensive, but you can of course just walk around and explore Seattle Center. I would definitely 
recommend doing that. The Waterfall Garden Park is in Pioneer Square, so if you happen to be checking out that art walk, I would recommend you also check out Waterfall Garden Park. The Starbucks Reserve is another one I probably should include in this list. There's actually a couple locations, maybe even three by now, and this is basically like Willy Wonka's factory of coffee. So I recommend you check out the Starbucks Reserve. I will say though, if you're thinking about getting coffee at the Starbucks Reserve, I wouldn't recommend doing so. The coffee is definitely more expensive than a standard Starbucks. That being said, it is worth the trip just to see all the awesome things that they do there. And in most cases, I think they're gonna offer you some free samples as well. That is it. If you made it to the end of this video, I said I would recommend four or five things to have the perfect Seattle day. So I'm gonna go through this list and pick those now. I would say without a doubt, definitely visit Gasworks Park. It was number one on this list for a reason. Next up, Olympic Sculpture Park. Again, this is another no brainer because you have the outdoors, you have the views and you have the art as well. Cary Park, without a doubt, go see Cary Park. And then just to get you around town, I'm gonna to put the Ballard Locks on this list. And again, if you wanna do something active, I would also add Green Lake. This is, this is like an impossible task though. Really, anything on this list is a ton of fun. Once again, I am certain that I left some amazing free things off of this list, so let me know in the description below if you've got something you'd like to add. Seattle is one of my favorite places in the entire world. I know that I'm extremely biased because I grew up here, but if you are thinking about coming and haven't pulled the trigger, I definitely recommend you do so. Yes, it can be expensive, but I hope that I have proven to you by now that Seattle can be a lot of fun on the cheap. If you are coming to Seattle, I hope you are excited to come visit and check out some of these things. You are not going to regret it. I hope all of you got a ton of value out of this, and if you did, I super, super appreciate a like down below. That's just your way of saying thank you. And definitely consider subscribing to the channel if you have not. I put out videos roughly once a week on all things money. Once again, my name is Frankie. This is The Money Resolution, and as always, I will talk to you guys soon. If you want more interesting content on all things money, you should check out this video or that one. See, it doesn't rain every day in Seattle. It's February.